This teaching of Jesus has been misunderstood for far too long, and here's the truth. It's actually the key to unlocking miracles in your life. Today, we're diving into something truly transformative. I'm peeling back the layers of ancient wisdom in my series about the Bible and Jesus of Nazareth. This isn't just about religion or faith. It's about decoding a guidebook for living your best life. And let me tell you, I've been fascinated by this ever since I picked up my first metaphysics book at just 12 years old. Back then, I realized something profound. The Bible isn't just a collection of religious texts. It's not a book meant to sit on a dusty shelf or to be read only on Sundays. No, it's a life manual. It's packed with timeless wisdom, life-changing principles, and lessons that can help you not just survive, but thrive. Every character, every story, from Adam and Eve to Abraham, and of course, Jesus offers a roadmap for transformation. Take Adam and Eve, for example. Their story isn't just about disobedience, it's about the human experience. It reveals what happens when we chase what's forbidden, the inner struggles that follow, and how we can find our way back to alignment. Or look at Abraham and his descendants. Their journey to the promised land? That's a metaphor for your own goals, challenges, and triumphs. These stories don't just entertain, they work on your subconscious, reprogramming you for success. Today, we're diving into one of the most powerful lessons hidden in these stories. It's a metaphysical law found all through the Bible, and when you use it, miracles don't just become possible, they will happen. This isn't just a theory, I've seen it work in my life again and again. Are you ready to learn this life-changing principle? If your answer is yes, take the first step right now. Leave a comment below and say, I am an unstoppable soul. This isn't just a statement. It's the first step in your journey to making miracles happen. Now, let me ask you something. Are you dealing with conflict, whether it's with a person or a situation? Do you have enemies? Do you face challenges with people or circumstances? Jesus of Nazareth taught us about forgiveness. It was one of his main teachings. When asked how many times we should forgive, he said, 70 times seven. Why does the Bible talk so much about forgiving your enemies and protecting yourself from their arrows? Because it works. When someone sends hate your way, forgiving them and feeling compassion frees you. They keep their karma, but you're no longer tied to it. Jesus' advice to forgive isn't just about being kind, it's about taking care of yourself. If you step back during conflict, accept what's happening, and forgive with compassion, the most powerful tool we have, you'll break the cycle and a miracle will follow. This isn't just hope, it's a promise. Forgiving your enemies really does shield you from their arrows. I experience this every day. Imagine someone like me, sharing biblical and metaphysical teachings with millions of followers on social media. Big names like Jennifer Lopez and Oprah Winfrey practice affirmations and mental conditioning. Will Smith and Jim Carrey follow these ideas too. Yet people like us are often called pseudoscientists or frauds. Now think about the love I get from thousands of followers who connect with these teachings. But there's also negativity from people afraid of new ideas that challenge their beliefs. They respond with hate to protect themselves. Even so, when I practice forgiveness, blessings always follow. That's why I'm urging you to try it too. For example, there was a librarian who started criticizing me. She'd say things like, don't listen to her. At first, I felt angry and thought, what does she know? But then I realized something deeper. This librarian spends her life organizing books written by others, books that became bestsellers. Imagine how hard it must be to love books so much, yet spend your life shelving other people's successes instead of writing your own bestseller. It's normal for someone like that to feel frustrated, especially if they think their dream is out of reach. 
It's human nature to feel resentment when you don't know the truth that, as Jesus said, sets you free. Once I understood this, my anger turned into compassion. I thought, this poor woman is stuck in a job she doesn't love, surrounded by the success of others while feeling her own dreams flipping away. I imagined her pain but also how I could reach out with love and say, it's not too late. Chase your dreams. Criticizing me will only drag you down. Rise above it. That's when I realized why Jesus called Judah's friend, even though he knew Judah's was about to betray him. Jesus saw Judah's with compassion and forgave him in advance. If you can forgive your enemies the same way, you'll protect yourself from their arrows. But don't just take my word for it, or even Jesus's. Try it for yourself. Think about someone who envies or dislikes you, someone who's shown you hate. Sadly, this often happens when people see someone else succeed and feel they can't. If someone speaks against you, whether out loud or in silence, it's usually envy. Why? Because if they didn't care about you, they wouldn't react. If your success stirs them, it's hitting a nerve. When you forgive those people, even the ones trapped in envy or mediocrity, you free yourself. Forgiveness breaks the karmic link between you and them. They stay with their karma, but you rise above it. Forgiveness isn't about wishing them harm. It's about freeing yourself from the negativity they bring. Any negativity you see around you reflects something vibrating within you. When you forgive, you stop matching that vibration. That's how you avoid their arrows, by cutting the connection to negativity altogether. One thing I've learned to do is embrace negativity instead of fighting it. When you face something or someone negative, don't try to push it away. Welcome it. Why? Because it gives you a chance to put this principle into practice. Imagine how free you'd feel if negativity or enemies no longer had any power over you. So how do you get rid of negativity? Not by avoiding it or running from it, but by meeting it with indifference. When you resist negativity, you feed it. But when you're indifferent, it fades away. That's the ultimate wisdom. When you stop fighting something, it passes through you and disappears. The same goes for negative emotions. Fighting them only makes them stronger. That's why techniques like tapping work. They help you notice the negativity, let it flow through you and release it. This is a powerful process, and it works. Try it, and see how your life transforms. Jesus of Nazareth taught, forgive your enemies 70 times seven. The Bible, the ultimate guide for living a successful life, reminds us, forgive your enemies and dodge their arrows and let the dead bury their dead. It's not your karma, it's theirs. Forgive them, understand why they act the way they do, and respond with compassion. I promise when you do, you'll see a miracle. These challenges are tests, proof that if you can imagine it, you can create it in your life. I hope this teaching has inspired you. Don't forget to follow me here, subscribe to this channel, and turn on notifications. Let's keep growing together.